Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank my right honourable friend for the letter he wrote to the Select Committee, the Justice Select Committee, this morning. In it, he said, the bill will prevent human rights from being used as a way to bring claims on overseas military operations. But he will recall that some of the gravest crimes of the Iraq war were only revealed through recourse to the Human Rights Act enforced in our domestic courts. I think particularly of the systematic torture of detainees by British soldiers in Basra that was revealed in the Baha Musa case. Uh, only because of the Human Rights Act after the Ministry of Defence had declined to investigate. So can he provide reassurances to the House that the new Bill of Rights will not operate to suppress such serious human rights abuses from coming to light in the future? Can I, can I say to the Honourable Lady, I understand the point she makes, and of course we need to have proper accountability when anything goes wrong, and our professionalism of our armed forces is second to none, but mistakes can happen and there needs to be accountability. But the reality is we have the international law of armed conflict, which is designed to that, and it has been unhelpful, indeed it has created legal uncertainty, to layer on top of that an extra tier of human rights obligations. It's created uncertainties to the state of the law and created huge uncertainty for our armed forces. So we'll make sure that there is the accountability she, uh, she, um, she, she, she looks for, but we will also deal with the extraterritorial jurisdiction, which frankly has encouraged litigation and many spurious claims, as well as the ones that she mentions.